Now here's the man that needs no introduction. Hey everybody, it's uh, Jim here. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Hey everybody, it's uh, Jim here. I've always wanted to do this. Hey everybody, it's uh, Jim here. What's your connection to Parkinson's disease? Hey everybody, it's uh, Jim here. Ah, sorry, that's my foot. I'll do better next time. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Spinning Wheels, Parkinson's Conversations with Jim here podcast. I'm Jim here in Ottawa, Ontario. It's a beautiful day. My good friend Mike Loughran is uh, in Control Central uh, back in Toronto, Ontario. We have an extraordinary episode uh, for you today. So I'm not going to talk for a long time about introducing it. Uh, I will, however, say that we'd like to thank our sponsors. Uh, the first one is Parkinson's Awareness in Action, and they're out of Cornwall, Ontario, and they can be found uh, on Facebook. Uh, and we'd also like to thank uh, PDT, uh, the healing power of tea applied to Parkinson's. Please go to www.pdt.com for more information. Like I said, we have a, a great episode for you today. I'd like to introduce you to a woman named Li Jiang, and she is going to get into her Parkinson's story. And we think uh, that you will find, just like we did, that it is an amazing story. So let's let's jump right into it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, here is Li's story. Uh, this morning, I'd like to welcome Li Zhang from, from China, who is now living in Toronto. Uh, Li, welcome to the podcast. Oh, uh, it's my pleasure to be here. Okay. Hey, let's, let's say we get right into it, Li. Uh, can you tell me about your Parkinson's journey from like, that initial diagnosis to uh, where you are today? Well, I was officially diagnosed in the summer vacation before my last year of undergraduate. I was 21 years old, and that was uh, around 13 years ago. My symptoms started about two years before the diagnosis, and I have no family history of Parkinson's. I did a gene test at the age of 25, and uh, it says I have LARC2 and PARC2 gene mutation. So that all leads to young onset Parkinson's disease. And um, this is quite a rare combination. From what I learned, the average age of young onset with Park 2 is actually 18 years old. So in that sense, I'm really lucky because I got it a little bit older. And uh, my first symptoms were dystonia in my right leg, right hand. And uh, growing up, I was very active. So when in undergraduate years, when I run, I trip into myself and I fall a lot, I realized there's a problem. And at that time, I also, because of the uh, hand dystonia, I was not able to write. I was not able to use chopsticks to eat. So I caused a lot of tension, confusion uh, at that time. And uh, my doctor initially di uh, diagnosed me with Parkinson's disease and gave me le levodopa, but I was taking it at such a small dose that it didn't really work for me. So they decided that I was not responsive to levodopa. And then I had I started the whole journey of trying many, many different kinds of medication. And at one time, I remember I was taking over 30 pills a day, and that didn't really relieve any symptoms, but caused a lot of side effects. And uh, also when at one time I was allergic to one medication, I was sent to ICU, almost died. So my doctor decided to retry levodopa at a higher dose. And we were so surprised to find that it, I responded really well to levodopa. So from then on uh, until 10 years later, I responded really, really well to levodopa. Like in one sense, it was fortunate because I could return back to normal life. I graduated. I started to work in a accounting firm as a financial finance auditor. And in another sense, I was it was unfortunate because I started to live in denial, and uh, I have no one in my circle who know more about 
this disease. And also from my family, the only message, the kind of only message I get from them is to try to hide it, not to tell tell to anyone because of the social uh, stigma in China. So as you can imagine, I spent a lot, a lot of time to try to understand my emotions, my feelings, and try to find ways to process all these feelings. Then uh, in... 2018, December 2018, I came to Canada by myself to uh, study my MBA degree. And uh, I uh, then in, uh, two years later, I graduated from MBA. I specialized in finance and social sector management. Then I started working in an investment, uh, impact investment firm. And uh, then COVID hit. I realized social isolation is not really good for us. And also, probably I hit the 10 years mark with my Parkinson's journey. My symptoms really came fast and furious. Like the progression made me scared, really. Uh, and then within one year, I quit my job. I decided to manage my symptoms full time. Now I live alone and I am my own caretaker. What are your major symptoms right now? Um, as you can imagine, a lot. Uh, dystonia first, first developed in right leg, right hand, then developed to my shoulder and neck. And then I have tremor in my left foot. I have end of dose dyskinesia. And uh, I have more and more off periods, which makes my whole body, especially my upper body, very rigid. And sometimes it's hard to breathe. And um, also I have excessive sweating. It's funny that whenever I enter uh, into my friend's car, there's a fog <laughs> formed <laughs> on the window. And she said, you're really a powerful steamer. Uh, and also... <laughs> I have a lot of fatigue. Yeah, okay. that's basically it. But the neck problem is the cause the most issue for me right now. Tell us what, what happens when your neck uh, is off or goes on you. It's amazing that when your neck is healthy, you don't realize how heavy your head is. I feel like I'm holding a watermelon above my neck every day. and I have to hold it all the time. So... I have neck dystonia, which is a constant pulling and uh, muscle spasm uh, back of my neck. So I like now I have to lean on the wall to sit still and talk to you. Otherwise, I am not able to sit still like this. But you do what you have to do in order to uh, to be as comfortable as you can be. We yeah. uh, appreciate that. And you might be in line for DBS surgery. I am on the fence, but I'm in the waiting list, and I just did a MRI okay. of, like two weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you go through with that, I, I hope it goes well. You said you were taking 30 pills. Yeah. How, how many do you take now that, you know, you found out that levodopa is effective? Way less. Way I less, take, okay. <laughs> I take four pills of levodopa every day, and uh, in total, six pills of Premipaxel, so mm -hmm. that's 10 in total for every day. Okay, all right, that's significant uh, decrease. That was a good uh, good rediscovery by your initial doctor. What sort of community do you have that has, you know, helps support you along your way? I, uh, initially in China, I didn't really have any community around me, so I'm really happy to find so many people that support me in this journey in Canada. And uh, I'm currently part of two young onset Parkinson supporting groups. One is Mike's group. One is a ladies supporting group. And I'm part of the Rigid Rider, which is a Toronto uh, riding club for people with Parkinson's. I am the member of a uh, PAC of Parkinson Canada, which is, I think, Patient Advisory Council. And I also volunteer in various fundraising events during the year like super walk, some riding events. And uh, I also have a couple of close friends around the world with Parkinson's so that we talk often about our 
experiences about our emotions and uh, uh, yeah, I also participate in different conferences around the world. I like to travel, so that's an excuse for travel to participate or volunteer in the conference and also travel. I know that, that Lee has volunteered uh, to cycle in the spinning wheels relay to end of Parkinson's coming up in the, the summer of 2024 from Nova Scotia. Uh, to Ottawa. So she's going to cycle through Nova Scotia and Prince Edward Island and New Brunswick and Quebec. And uh, not just from Quebec to Ottawa, but going to come back to Toronto and around. So what what inspired you to uh, volunteer to be, you know, one of the major riders of the of the relay? I think one of the biggest inspiration comes from you guys, the spinning tours. Uh, spinning wheel tour uh, two years ago, that is huge for me because you opened a door for me that showed me this is possible. And uh, I'm just very curious what I can find on the trip and uh, also have fun. I think it would be both uh, fun and 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 we'll see you'll see a lot of things. Do you actually remember uh, when the spinning wheels tour came through uh, into Mississauga? And here's the ever popular segment, Jim's Spinning Wheels Tour Flashback. We were in Hamilton and, and you were there and you were riding with us and we had the jerseys by yeah. that point. And you you got your Spinning Wheels Tour Rigid Rider jersey. That like, was this my first, first jersey. That, your first, yes, right? Yes. That was your first bike jersey. That's awesome. You're going to cycle, uh, you know, 100 kilometers a day for a few thousand kilometers. What uh, what are you doing to train for this? I try not to let fear then in a way. Uh, <laughs> for me, like there's usually a threshold for exercise. Too yep. little exercise, like anything under 30 minutes doesn't work for me because I need some time to relax my body and really enter the flow of moving. So for the past two months, I my my dose of exercise, uh, daily dose of exercise include a uh, first rowing six kilometers. My speed has increased significantly. I'm so proud of that. And, nice. <laughs> and I've rowed my bicep for the very first time in my life. Um, with rowing, it really helped my upper body, especially the strengthening of muscles, and it helped really really uh, big in my hand dystonia and also my shoulder and neck dystonia. And uh, then I spin. Usually I spin for uh, two hours. That is around 50 kilometers to 60 kilometers, depending on my, <laughs> on my condition that day. But it really, really helped my uh, foot dystonia and my overall energy. Okay. And then, uh, and and then stretch, yeah. of course. Yeah. Well, of, co of course, right? Yeah, we need to need to do that as well. Okay, so that's that's a lot of activities. Like, so what what strategies have you incorporated to like manage your PD symptoms while you're doing all this exercise? Um, I try to look at it as a way. Like, if I have PD symptoms during exercise, I try to look at it a way to train my mind to train my resilience and uh, also to dig deeper like uh, a gold mine uh, in myself and then uh, after usually usually after half an hour or one hour my symptoms really relieve i'm symptom free for the rest of the time on a bike or on a rowing machine and after the workout walking out of the gym i'm mostly symptom free Okay, that's, I mean, uh, that's fine. We, we, we talk about, right, the benefit of exercise yeah. uh, for, for Parkinson's symptoms. And I'm glad you, you get to experience that, right? I mean, so I know that sometimes when I exercise, I, you're right, after 20 minutes, half an hour, I, I feel pretty good. Like I feel symptom free. And, uh, and for the most part, it stays that way. Occasionally, uh, for no rhyme or reason, whatever, like halfway through, I'll start to feel Parkinson's again. But, you know, like training your mind to push through that is is very important. And uh, 
Yeah, it's it's uh, ah, I'm, you know what? I when I listen to you because I'm I'm going to be cycling from Victoria to Ottawa and we'll meet in Collingwood. Yeah. I need to step up my game a little bit here just to uh, to make sure that I can make it to see you. I give up. I give up. <laughs> <laughs> and Mike has decided uh, he's not going to anymore. That's just it. No, no problem. And so, you know what, Lee? Uh, I mean, we have to get through this year, right? Or not? But we we we're 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 planning to do this uh, this spinning wheels relay for the next three years, and we're going to establish three different routes. Have you ever thought about cycling from the north down, or or tackling the mountains in uh, in British Columbia? I think Mike knows that I would always say yes to any challenges my way. So <laughs> we'll see, but I will train for it. I'll prepare. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll talk after the relay is actually over and, and you've had a little bit to, uh, to digest uh, for sure on that one. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so um, while you're doing this, Right. And you said you, you're in two support groups and you've got a community there. What, what can people do to help support you in your, you know, just your 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 training for this? Right. It's a significant amount of time. Like, do you need any help? Do you want any help? Are you looking for people to ride with you when the weather gets a little bit better? What what can people do for you? Well, riding together is obviously great. But one thing it's in my mind uh, all this time is I have very little confidence in fix a bike, in fixing a bike. Like if I get a flat tire, if my chain, mm -hmm. my chain fell, I can put it back. But if my chain break or like if any other major problems with my bike, I have little experience with that. So I would really want to spend some time to learn how to fix a bike, how to assemble a bike, how to disassemble a bike, something like that. So mm -hmm. if anyone is experiencing that, I would like to uh, learn, be a student. Okay, well, you know what, I, I'm, I'm offering right now because uh, I like to, uh, you know, to do those stuff and I, I know just enough to know I don't know a lot, but, uh, but I know how to do the basics on that. So, when I'm uh, when I'm down in Toronto, we'll make sure we we hook up for a couple of hours. We'll bring oh, awesome. come on over to bikes. We'll uh, we'll bring your bike over and we'll run through how to change a flat tire or what happens if the chain breaks or what to look for. So because that's thank important, you, you got to have the bike, right? Hey, no problem. I mean, thank you uh, for for doing uh, you know for agreeing to be a, a major part of the relay. We're we're, we're so grateful uh, to you for that. It's a and so what. Um, what then? I mean, you've got uh, you've got a lot of exercise built into your day. What what is a like a a normal day uh, in the life of Li Zhang? <laughs> uh, my days are very boring, <laughs> and I almost leave the exact same day every day. Uh, but I love I love that. So I would go to the gym every day. Uh, like if the gym is open. Um, I would spend at least uh, three hours there and sometimes four hours. Then half a day is passed. Then I'll spend uh, a lot of time uh, writing, writing my diary every day and also listen to books because I would like to read, because, but my neck problem uh, made it hard to read. So I listen to books and um, also spend some time watch video, random video on um, people like training athlete training for marathon, athlete training for triathlon, like that kind of stuff really motiv motivate me a lot. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. It sounds like a full day to me. I don't know if it's boring. Uh, for definitely full. I'd like to go back, uh, if I could, just to, uh, you talked about how you love to travel. Yeah. Uh, and you use PD as an excuse to get out there. And I, and I know you were in Spain, right? Because I, I saw you at the World Park of Congress in Barcelona. So yeah. uh, you've been to Spain. Where, where else have you traveled to uh, using Parkinson's as a sort of a, a gateway? Um, I went to Washington, D.C. two years ago for a, a Parkinson conference. Mm -hmm. And then I made some friends there. And uh, this year, 2024, I also plan to <laughs> ride across the U.S. with them. So that's also a way to travel 
with the excuse of Parkinson's and also be on a bike makes me happy. Yeah. Okay, so just to clarify things, not only are you doing the spinning wheels relay to end Parkinson's in late July to late September, but you're also cycling part of the United States earlier in the year? Uh, yeah, the plan, but it's still a plan. So if I'm not on the journey, I'm like, that's still a plan. Uh, our plan yeah. is to start from uh, Washington, D.C., uh, the very east of America, uh, mm -hmm. right all the way to San Diego, and uh, ride 6,800 kilometers across the U.S. Wow. From May to July. <laughs> From May to July, you are you are going to be an extraordinary cyclist. Uh, you, you you'll have to write, not just read a book. You'll have to write a book about your uh, your ten thousand kilometers or eleven thousand kilometers that you're going to put on doing coast to coast in the United States and east coast to Ottawa in Canada. What a wow! That's so impressive. Well, we'll see if I'm still alive at the end of this year. <laughs> well, and I hope you are, right? Safety first. I really hope that you are. You are one of the most positive people I know. Like, even if I met you for the first time right now, I would I would be saying that. But tell us, what is one thing that has happened to you that has been positive that actually wouldn't have happened had you not been diagnosed with Parkinson's? It's not one thing, like... This is yeah. a really big topic for me because uh, I'll put it this way, because I was diagnosed in my early 20s, like almost my entire adulthood, I live with Parkinson. So it really shaped my entire value system, like my career choice, my relationships, my way of living. So uh, I think my relationship with Parkinson started uh, I see it as an enemy. I was really angry about it. And I want to win the battle. But now I really see it as my teacher. It teaches me how to um, better understand the relationship with myself, better understand the relationship with the world, with others. So it really teaches me how to accept myself, love myself unconditionally, and really live unapologetically. That's really a big thing for me and also it teaches me to be patient have empathy have empathy uh uh and also be kind to others uh and you do and you are uh that is such a an, a great way of looking at, at a, a, a life that has been impacted by parkinson's i you uh you are you're further down the road than than I am in terms of you know understanding and and living unapologetically and, and accepting yourself. I that, that's so awesome, Lee. Thank you uh, very much for sharing that. I think that's that's a that's something we can all aspire to. Uh, recently, wow. recently, I've been reading a book. Uh, it's yep. called "Build the Life You Want," and uh, it uh, it discuss, like talks about the purpose of life, and mm -hmm. basically two questions you need to answer in order to understand your purpose of life. The first one is, what do you live for? The second one, what are you willing to die for? So I think Parkinson's really gave me a very clear sense of the answer of these two questions. So my purpose of life is to heal myself and heal others. And I'm willing to die for on the journey of healing. So <laughs> yeah, like I think it's very easy for me to answer the the question that most people spend the whole life trying to figure out. Hey, everybody. Wow. What an incredible story. What an incredible person uh, Li Zhang is. I, I feel honored to know her uh, and to think that she says that we inspire her. Wow, she inspires us. Uh, that's for sure. So, uh, like always, we, uh, we ask if you like what you see, could you just share this podcast? with one other person can you do you know someone who would benefit from hearing Lee's story uh and i think we do i think we all know somebody uh who would do that so i'd like to thank lee zhang again for coming on to the spinning wheels parkinson's 
Conversations with Jim here podcast. Uh, I look forward to hearing more about her training, hearing more about her cycling adventures uh, this summer. And it's going to be a great day uh, when we meet uh, up in Collingwood, Lee coming, leading her crew from the east and and, uh, and me and the, the crew that uh, was me coming from the west. Uh, and then we'll ride into Ottawa together. And I'm, I'm so looking forward to that. So thanks again, Lee. Uh, really appreciate you coming on the podcast. Uh, thanks again to everybody uh, for listening. Leave a comment, uh, throw a like up there if you would like to. Until next time, be safe, everyone. One of his first comments was, it tastes awful. And, um, you know, that maybe that works for cough syrup, but uh, it shouldn't be the case for tea. So PDT tastes nice. Mm -hmm.